Good morning, Husker fans, and welcome back to the Husker Big Red YouTube channel. I'm Chris Peterson, and joining me is Danny Gillette, and uh, we're here for one of our Saturday live chats, and we're going to talk about some Nebraska basketball. Um, we'll talk about the women's team, since they were the only Nebraska you know, big sports entity that showed up in the NCAA tournament on uh, Friday, so we'll talk about them, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of break into it, but a little bit of a post-mortem. It's uh, difficult. Uh, it, it was difficult, but like I was telling Danny off air, it's been like every... Nebraska NCAA tournament game I've ever seen, so I'm not sure, you know, why we would be surprised that it went the way that it did. But at any rate, Danny, how are you doing this morning? Good. I'm very tired. Uh, I basically watched games all day yesterday, and there were some really good games. Um, and so those are fun to watch. Uh, the Auburn Yale game was a good one that I watched before before the Nebraska game, and man, anything could happen in March. Uh, like, e even not counting Nebraska, I feel like this has been a really strong tournament so far, and it's why it's one of my favorite times of the year. Yeah, it has been really interesting. Um, you know, lots of exciting matchups, lots of exciting games, and that, um, yeah, that's one thing that made it, you know, somewhat disappointing. Nebraska got beat by, like, like a 16 seed. They were one of the least competitive teams in the entire tournament. Um, but, uh, so yeah, it was disappointing, but March madness is always fun. And it was good to see, you know, the women break the, the decade long, uh, losing streak. And they at least got us a split in the old, uh, Trev Alberts NCAA tournament cage match. <laughs> they did. And they, and they had to, uh, and you know, it was kind of a game where, you know, they just stuck to what they did best and it worked. And on the flip side, the men tried to do that and it didn't work. So it was kind of interesting to see. The two, you know, kind of juxtapositions uh, for both teams. Yeah, and we will uh, break it down, you guys. Make sure you put your comments, uh, questions in the chat. Um, so thanks for everybody who's uh, hopping on here today on all the Husker Big Red and the Big Red Banter social channels here. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to uh, hit the subscribe button um, so you don't miss any of our future content. But uh, yeah, like you said, it was a disappointing night. I was really disappointed in, um, you know, I just, I talked about it all week on the podcast, how they had to find a way to guard Wade Taylor or do something to guard Wade Taylor because just trotting out, you know, Case A or, or their, you know, their normal starting five, I talked about them needing to switch it up. They didn't do that. Um, the game plan was not good. And, uh, you know, they basically let Wade Taylor go out there and get open looks early on in the game. They let him get hot. And from that point, it was game over. So, you know, I mean, I get that they were limited in what they could do, but the lack of, I mean, the fact that they came out in the second half and had Bryce Williams again on him like that to me, it just, and then of course he came out and hit another three. It's just like, I, I just do not understand it. I mean, Bryce Williams is six, nine Wade Taylor is six foot. I mean that there's no, he's lightning quick. There's just no way that was ever going to be a good matchup. And I honestly just don't know what Fred Hoiberg and the coaching staff were thinking on that one. Well, we don't really have anybody that can guard him. I know you said Jamarcus Lawrence off air, but even that I think would have been tough. At least Lawrence has the quickness. So it was just a bad matchup for us. You know, athletically, physically, I thought they were a little bit stronger. I mean, we need a physical big man. You know, I love Josiah Alec, right? Not a leak. Or is it the other way around? I remember. <laughs> It's we, Alec, I believe. Alec, okay, <laughs> good. So we're saying that right at least today. Hopefully, probably not. Um, <laughs> but we we need a dominant big man, like an actual dominant big man. You know, I love Rink Mast, but he's not a true rebounding big man. He's more of a, you know, sh shooting type of, you know, kind of that international style big man versus a bruiser in the post. And we need that badly. And, you know, I just think, you know, Texas A&M had that athleticism and that quickness that Nebraska didn't. And you've watched the last two games, um, Texas A&M and Illinois. We we struggled with you know players that could drive in the lane, make quick step back shots, and we we just don't have that athleticism. And you know it really showed over these last two weeks, and especially last night. And you know I get, you know they should have made adjustments, but it wouldn't have mattered. Like that. Like, if you take away Wade Taylor, then, you know, some of the other guys that really stepped up for AM last night, I, I forget his name, but he, um, you know, they just had a well rounded attack that we couldn't keep up with. And they exploited us defensively and they got the job done. Yeah, I agree. But I, I mean, I don't, I don't agree that this, like, you know, I don't think, like, if you play that game 10 times, Texas AM wins it 10 times. Like, I don't think it's that bad of a matchup. Like, that was a winnable game. 
Nebraska just played like crap. I mean, all around offensively, they played. To, nobody showed up. I mean, except for, you know, Casey Tomonaga, it just – it wasn't, you know, it just was, they played bad basketball. They were dribbling, you know, into double teams. They weren't, you know, shooting the ball well. And uh, defensively, I mean, they're, I, you know, I'm not saying I'm a. Manny expert, Obaseki but, was his name. I got to give him credit and I got to give him his flowers. He played really well. So, I mean, yeah. if it but wasn't I mean, Taylor, it was Obaseki. And if it wasn't those two, it was Radford. But part of that too is that, you know, then you have everybody shifting, you know, and trying to, you know, kind of overcompensate to Taylor. So, I mean, just the, the worst thing that the, the one thing that happened basically that I said all week where Nebraska could lose this game is if they let way Taylor come out and catch fire. And that's exactly what they did. And they just made it way too easy. I mean, it's one thing if the guy's making contested shots, but like it's it just, it was a bad matchup and I don't know why they thought that that was going to work. So, you know, that that's, you know, I, I just keep going back to that. I mean, I get that, yeah, Texas A&M is a really athletic team, but there's no way Nebraska should have given up 100 points, I mean, in that game. That's just, you know, that in my opinion, there's just no no excuse for that. Um, so, at any rate, it's disappointing, I mean, the way that they play defense all year. Um, the three-point defense, you know, did hurt them, but, I mean, and at the same time, they didn't execute, you know, on the offensive end either. And so I'm not, I'm not really sure what happened with them. And, I mean, I agree that, you know, it, yeah, it would be nice if they could get a better big than, you know, rank mass, but, I mean, that's a lot easier said than done, too. I mean, right. you know, they're they're in contact with Terrace Reed in the transfer portal, but so are about 30 other teams. And, you know, he would be he would be an ideal situation. But I think you want Rink Mass back. I mean, I think, oh, yeah. uh, you know, anybody who's saying they don't want him back, would that's crazy. So I, that's the thing, though. You, it's really hard. You know, you talk about adding another big. It's really hard to play with two bigs. And Nebraska did that last night, and it's it screwed them. I'm sorry, but it, it killed them. They should have they should have went to a small lineup right from the tip. And, uh, you know, I knew that was going to be an inflection point, and we talked about that. And, uh, you know, they tried to go big, and it really, really hurt them. And uh, they needed to go small, and guys like, you know, Gary and Bryce Williams had to get it done on the boards. And so that, that's why I don't – I mean, Juwan Gary went into Kansas State and got 16 offensive rebounds or whatever. Like, it's I just don't understand why, you know, some of the guys didn't play well. That's, I mean, I get that Texas A&M is a big, you know, physical team, but at the same time, they have one dude that's over six foot seven. So they're not that big. So, I mean, I just really don't understand why, you know, Nebraska just got outworked in my opinion. They just did not, you know, they just got outworked. They got out toughed. And I mean, I think if they played that game again, it, it could go differently. Um, so, I mean, I thought it was disappointing, but at the same time, you know, it's times a flat circle. It's, it's exactly, you know, it was the 1994, you know, Eric Pikowski team all over again, you know, getting whipped by Penn or, you know, it's just every single, you know, there's not, there hasn't been a single NCAA tournament game in my entire life that I've watched Nebraska play where they've been competitive, not one. Yeah, and it's it's been a rough, you know, I don't want to say a couple of years because it's been more than that, but the NCAA tournament history with Nebraska has not been strong. And, you know, I'll be interested to see how they adjust um, next season. You know, I still think people were saying, Fire Hoiberg, you know, this was a bad extension, blah, blah, blah. No, it wasn't. You're not going to get anybody better to come here. Let's be honest. And, you know, I think he has his team yeah, going. People, the are right insane. people are insane. <laughs> Fire Hoiberg. He, he wasn't deserving of the extension. Okay. Fire Hoiberg. Let's go back to Tim Miles where we recruit two stars and then get blown out routinely. Um, people uh, should really – think about this because in the uh tunnel talk this week from husker online which i just got to reading this morning um there was talk about the fred hoiberg extension and you know there's rumor of bill self leaving kansas and if bill self leave can leaves kansas guess who kansas is one of the people they're going to call fred hoiberg so yeah people who think that fred hoiberg's not a he's by far the best that nebraska will ever get you know, so like you, we we need to just unless be we got Bill Self or is Bill Self retiring? Was there any follow up on that, or is it just? He well, might no, they're saying he would go to the NBA. Not, okay, not retiring, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> talk about Fred's the best Nebraska's ever. Like Fred Hoiberg's, like you know, Michigan getting Jim Harbaugh. They're never going to do better than, like, unless you just stumble into, you know, like you hire some mid major coach that happens to be, you know, like the next genius. Like Fred Hoiberg's the best it's probably ever going to get. Honestly, good for Bill Self on getting an NBA look because he's done it pretty damn well for a long time at Kansas and you know I think um I think you know he would be an asset to a team but yeah if you want Fred Hoiberg gone um but I hope know, he doesn't go because I don't want yeah. Fred Hoiberg gone I'm just saying in general like, to the, fans, like <laughs> to the fans like I, if if you want Fred Hoiberg gone then 
I don't know what to tell you. I think that's a massive, massive uh, knee-jerk reaction to what happened last night. Yeah, I mean, it was a bad matchup. I mean, that's that's the NCAA tournament. Like, it's that's why you know people want to look at coaches and you know, oh, their their records are bad or whatever. Sometimes it's it's it really is a lot about the bracket, the matchups, how it works out. And like Fred built this team to play in the Big Ten, and you know, they they ran up against an SEC team, so that happens. I do wish that they they would have adjusted because I think that they had you know, I think they had more clubs in their bag than they utilized last night. You know, that that's. I thought all year that they could match up with just about any team because they can go big or they can go small. And it just seemed like, you know, they tried to go big and they tried to, you know, kind of force the ball inside and it just, it just did not work. So I don't know. It just was, it just was really weird that it seemed like they got away from, you know, some of the things they had success. They didn't, they didn't I didn't really see, you know, like rink mass getting the ball at the top of the key a lot, you know, and kind of running those actions, running screens off of him. It just, it seemed like they really tried to focus a lot on that, post to post action, you know, feeding the ball inside, which I understand. I mean, I get their thinking because basically it was like, okay, both teams were in a position where, you know, ideally they couldn't necessarily guard the other team, right? Because AM doesn't have anybody right. over six, seven, and we don't have anybody who can match up with their guards. And Texas AM just did a better job of, you know, exploiting that mismatch. Nebraska tried, but they tried they tried too hard, I feel like, and they almost got away from what works and, and who they, you know, who they really are. I mean, yeah, like rink mass and, um, you know, Josiah Allen can score down low, but has that been Nebraska's bread and butter this year? I would say no, no. but, and so the fact that they tried to, I, I mean, I understand why they did that because it's like, okay, if you get some success there, then you might have to make Texas A&M, you know, shift out of their small lineup. So like, I get it. And that was your advantage, but it just, you know, obviously it didn't work out, but that's how it happens sometimes too. And the other thing is that Nebraska hasn't been here for a long time. Not, a, I don't think a single player on this team, you know, has been in the NCAA. I mean, maybe they have Bryce been. Williams? I think, uh, maybe. No, he wasn't. No, he hasn't been in the NCAA. I think maybe Jawan Gary with Alabama, but I think oh, he was yeah, like a bench yeah. player. Um, just Josiah might have been on another to maybe with New Mexico. I, I can't, I just can't remember um, his history with them, but at any rate, it's, it's hard to come into the, if you haven't played, you know, it is, it can be very difficult and the lights are shining bright. And I know it is great that the Nebraska fans like go out like crazy, but that I do, I do think that that creates a lot of pressure too. And that the fact that like, you know, it's just a lot of pressure to end the streak and the NCAA win streak. And, you know, I just think that there's so much with each big loss, it kind of builds. And, and, and then I do think that there was uh it was kind of crappy. I'll say of the committee to, to put the Trev Alberts thing on these guys, because it's like, you know, that was a question for Nebraska. It wasn't a worry for Texas A&M. It was just, you know, just it was unnecessary, but, you know, whatever. And you I gotta will say, and, you got to come out and play, though, you know. And I will say that there's a lot of pressure to win here, period. And to say that, and I don't say that you, but just a general statement to say that players should just ignore it. It's, I mean, it's hard. I mean, you see us on social media. You see you and me on social media. We, we're very passionate about everything. And, you know, being the only show in town is very hard. And I've said that during football season and I'll say it during basketball season. I mean, there is a lot of pressure to win here. And there's also, you know, I, I, I do think the Trev Alberts thing played a little bit into it, although uh, Trev went to um, football practice, so he wasn't there and um, which was a smart move. I think he kind of recognized that, Hey, maybe we should uh, not take this away from the kids and, you know, just let, go to football practice and let that be that. But, you know, I I think it, at the same time, I think, um, you know, there is a lot to be hopeful about for the future of the program. Um, it may look a little different next year, but, you know, I think Fred has shown that he can build through the transfer portal and recruit um, at a high level. I mean, talk about Nick Janowski coming in. We talked about him a lot on the show. Actually, I have. I've been kind of waving the flag and. Um, you know, and just kind of, we were talking about, obviously, if, you know, could Candace be open for Hoiberg? I mean, he would owe the school, you know, 10 million through March 31st of 2025, 7.5 million, 2026, um, 5 million through 2027 and 2 million through, um, March 31st, 2028. So, it wouldn't necessarily be a cheap move for Hoiberg to go to Kansas, but it's an attractive job. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it's yeah. I, I I'd be I'd be surprised, but you know, you never know. Uh, here's our first comment. Thank you, Co, for uh, 
coming on the show for uh, watching the show. Having a tough time talking. Buzz's lineup absolutely put Nebraska's to shame. As soon as they hit a couple of shots and can soften up the inside, it was over. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, once you know, it, it made it very difficult once they hit those shots to keep you know Wade Taylor out of it. And yeah, it just was one of those nights too. Sometimes you just have those nights where you know one team hits shots and one team doesn't. I mean, even with some of the the looks that Taylor got, I mean, to have him come out and start like six for six or whatever. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I mean, that's just. I mean, I think I think Texas A and M's um, lineup matches up very well for an NCAA tournament type of run, and I'll be interested to see what they do on Sunday. I'll be watching. I mean, you know, you think about where they were. They were, you know, um, I believe they were in the NIT last year. So to just to go from that, or no, n- not even the NIT. Was it the NIT or was it not? I don't know. Um, they weren't an NCAA tournament team last year, and now they've built themselves up to. You know, go to the round of sixty four, round of sixty four, and can have an old Southwest Conference uh, matchup there. That's always, I always, I always like that. I miss the Southwest Conference, Texas A and M and Houston. Yeah. It's so going to be a good be, game. That'll be fun. I, you know, that'll be a fun one. Buzz Buzz Williams is a good coach, so I mean, shout out to them. I mean, they did a really good job, and they knew how to exploit the mismatches, and they did that. So. An interesting note about Kelvin Sampson actually got his coaching career started at the uh, NAI school, Montana Tech, which is pretty close to where I live. Wow. So, okay. Uh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yep. So uh, it's pretty – so Montana people, especially in Butte, Montana, still uh, – they kind of root for Kelvin Sampson. He Who actually are you still, rooting for for the remainder of the tournament? Uh, nobody really. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing – I think Gonzaga is going to make a run. I have him in my bracket. I think they're going to go to the Final Four. But – um. Huh. You know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing them break through. Um, other than that, I, I really don't care. Um, you know, like I, I just follow Nebraska so closely. Like, you know, with UConn, like I honestly literally off the top of my head, I can't name more than like two players. I know Donovan Klingon. Like, that's it. I don't know. it. So it's just like I just don't follow it enough. But I mean, I'll obviously watch it. Um, but I think I think right now, though, on my main bracket, I still have all my final four teams like I had. I had Kentucky going out in the Elite Eight, so that took me off. Um, I think I, I think I might have had Nebraska in the Sweet Sixteen, but you know, whatever. Honestly, Kentucky because I had them because right I had them losing you know. anyway. But you know, Kentucky fans have a right to be angry, man. Like they they do way more than Nebraska fans. Um, I did want to say on Kobe. I think he's talking about um, you know Janowski here. Can't wave the freshman flag though. They can't be counted on for more than a minor role. And I mean, I I agree with that. I think look, this team's gonna have you know most of the guys can be back if they want to be outside of case and um josiah alec i believe sorry if we messed up the name but you know whatever um so <clears throat> bryce uh, um rank can be back juan can be back uh cj wilcher i know he walked but he could be back if he wanted to be um you know so it's really about uh they do have to get a point guard i think um and they need to get is, they need to is find aaron him. Ulis still on the team because he's on the roster itself he is on the roster, yeah, right now, for now. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, there what what the deal is if the NCAA, you know, made any rulings on that. There could be a chance of him maybe, you know, to maybe coming out of it in the future. I doubt it, though. I don't think we'll ever see him play for Nebraska. But having a true point guard would be nice. But and then Jerome Coleman will be leaving. I'm sure, I think he had his like, you know, he didn't play much this year. But that's another that's another scholarship. And yeah, if Ulysses leaves, that would be, you know. They'd be losing four scholarships. They have two freshmen coming in, so they'd have two spots. That's just off the top of my head. That's assuming everybody comes back. So, like if, like if CJ Wilcher didn't come back, then they'd have three spots. You know, um, if another guy, Gary or Bryce Williams or somebody. But really, I mean, if you look at Rink Mass, Bryce Williams and Jawan, I don't think any of those guys have like a, you know, a pro. I, I do think they can all play professionally, especially in Europe, maybe in the G League. But I don't see any of them getting drafted. So, really, I think you know, their best bet would be to come back at Nebraska and take the NIL money and play here and, you know, try to improve their stock a little bit more. But, you know, that's just the way that I see it. I don't know. I just thought it was cool, too. They just are saying on the broadcast that uh, Casey Tomonaga's girlfriend helped him learn English and things like that during his time at Nebraska. I thought that was really cool. It's always cool to hear different stories about, you know, backstories of the players. And she was up there supporting him in the stands. And he looked like he was having a good time. So, it was fun to see stuff like that, you know, despite the loss. And, um, you know, it, he is definitely going to be missed here in Lincoln. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, yeah, he he was great, man. He came out and was nailing threes. I thought it was going to be a good night when KSA, <clears throat> you know, was really hot. And it, it why was, did uh, Fred bench him early? Because I saw Fred take him out like in kind of at the not the midpoint of the first half, but he got sent to the bench pretty quick, and then he kind of just staggered playing time a little bit. Um, I just think that he, you know, I think with. KZ, I mean, he does. He does. He doesn't always play him a ton. I mean, he. I think he plays like twenty six or twenty seven minutes a night. So, I mean, I think it's. I just think he. Uh, you know, I think it was just a. You know, trying to keep him fresh type thing. And and the other well, thing is, he took him out while he was hot. Uh, well, I mean, I thought he played. I thought he played for a pretty long stretch there. I mean, I could he be did, remember but, it wrong, but no, he he definitely did, but. You know, at one point, he, he was the only source of offense for the pro, for uh, Nebraska. So, I don't know. It's easy I think, as I can guess now, but it was just kind of interesting to see, you know, the the matchups and you know how each coach played uh, played the, the the game within the game. Yeah. So he, I mean, he played twenty nine minutes. He played the third most minutes last night. Um, let's see. The matchup was terrible for him, but the matchup was terrible for everybody. So. I mean, I would yeah, have rather see, take his up. See, my thing is here is like, here's, you know, I just, Fred Hoy or Sam Hoyberg should have played more than 11 minutes. I mean, he, he needed to be out there quicker, you know, like, because the thing is, is at least Lawrence and, and Hoyberg can chase him off a screen. But, you know, like, basically, like, Bryce Williams had no shot coming off a screen. And they, they gave up two easy three pointers to, to Wade Taylor coming off screens. And it's like, you just can't do that. And then it's just, it shifts your entire defense then. And, you know, it's like, I get it, but you know, it's that, that like, and that's the thing about, you know, talking about like freshmen, the reason that freshmen kill you is because like a freshman will come out like in high school basketball. Oh, if you, if you like make a so-so contest, like the guy's not going to make the shot that many times, but if you make a so-so contest in the big 10, that's, you gave up three points and you do that twice in a game. That's six points. That's, an, that's the difference between winning and losing. That's why it's hard to play freshman. That's why, you know, you just, you can't give up, you can't let shooters get hot like that. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's, I, I get where they were coming from, but the defense was very poor in letting Wade Taylor start five for five. And to me, that's what was disappointing because it was like I felt that was the whole ball game right there. If you if you kept Wade Taylor from going off like that, you were going to have a chance. And they just it seemed like they let him get it. You know, it, it's like you wouldn't you wouldn't give Reggie Miller you know some wide open threes, would you? You know, like you want to make him work for it. And I just feel like they didn't do that with the way that they. Well, Reggie him. Miller would make him even if you were for it, and that's what Taylor did. I mean. Even when yeah, but I mean, you got to you got at least hitting. make him contested though. His first yeah. like three makes weren't even contested, and it was because they had Bryce Williams on him. And that's not right. a, that's not a slight to Bryce. He should have never been put in that situation. Right, but I mean, I think I think you know we didn't have anybody, and I know you said Jamarcus, and but in my opinion, we didn't have anybody to, that that could guard Taylor, and that's more of a credit to Taylor than it is a knock on Nebraska. I mean, I, I think that there's it would have been tough for sure, but, you know, just the way that, you know, it was like Doug McDaniel tore Nebraska up, and I knew that the same thing was going to happen unless they adjusted, and they didn't. And so, Or even yeah. Terrence Shannon to some degree. Yeah, but Terrence Shannon's a different, you know, that's a different animal, which, again, I, there was times in that game where, like, Tomonaga was on him. Like, Tomonaga should never be on Terrence Shannon ever because, for one – you know, you know that Tomanog is not a good defender. Okay, that's one thing. Why are you having him burn all of his energies trying to guard a guy that he can't guard? And they did that numerous times in the Big Ten semifinal. Like, so I just yeah, they did it in February, I think too. That, like, I just don't understand, you know, what they're doing in, in some of those uh, situations. And that, that's the other thing too with Bryce Williams. Okay, you talk about defensive rebounding. He's freaking six foot nine. So you're going to put him out on the perimeter guarding the point guard, and then you take another rebounder away from the basket. So I don't know, just. So there was things there that just didn't make sense to me. And I thought, you know, maybe you could try some different, you know, some different pressures, some traps, you know, different things, um, you know, but whatever. It, it is what it is. It probably wouldn't have mattered. But um, at any rate, I do want to talk about um, the women's basketball game. And, um, you know, unfortunately, another thing I want to mention, you know, Will, with Will Compton, we were talking about it off the air, but, you know, he was all decked out in his 51 basketball uniform, which was pretty cool, but. I don't know. He seems like he kind of seems like the jinx because after, um, you know, Nebraska loss, he's like, what's going on with, uh, you know, he he literally quote tweeted like with Ridge Lovett, then like 
not long after that, Ridge Lovett lost one to nothing. So <laughs> it's like yeah, maybe maybe I please stop. That, yeah. Maybe please stop tweeting about. Uh, if you love Nebraska sports, Will Compton, just please stop tweeting about it. <laughs> you know, like uh, uh, just cracks me up. <clears throat> the spring football can't get here soon enough. Um, but I mean, at least the women got a win last night. That was we huge. I, um, I was happy for Amy Williams. And the, um, what I'm excited about is, and that was a you know Texas A&M did a good job defensively, but you know Jazz didn't make any three pointers. She, she was 0 for six, two for 11 last night, and so I feel like she's not going to have another 0 for six game. So I feel like Oregon State, you know, probably should watch out um, for Jazz Shelley because I feel like she's going to you know bounce back. But man, Logan Nisley has been just such a stud down the stretch. I'm so excited for mm. her. And then, uh, you know, Britt Prince, which I do think, and I am hopeful going back to, you know, um, Co's comment about freshmen, but I, I am hopeful that she can come in and, and make an impact because they don't, you know, there, there's not a ton of freshmen that make huge impacts, but I feel like she's got an opportunity to do that next year. And, you know, even though she struggled a little bit, you know, Shelly still had six assists, so she was involved in the play, found another way to contribute even on an off night. And, um, you, you know, it's kind of interesting because Shelly – you know, wasn't efficient um, from beyond the arc against Iowa either. And so she struggled a little bit, nothing to be overly concerned about. I mean, this is the time of year where the games get tougher. But like you mentioned, Nisley had another strong game. You talk about X factors and, you know, players that need to step up and have stepped up in, at, in this time of year. And Nisley is one of them. And I'll be interested to see what she does on Sunday and see what she can do for a third act. Yeah, it will be it'll be really exciting. The tough thing about the women's tournament is you're actually playing on, you know, the home court of like the higher seed. So it'll be, you know, sort of like a road game, although I'm sure there'll be a lot of Nebraska fans there. So, you know, we'll see how that plays out. But um, yeah, as far as I know, I'll have to double check on the wrestling. I don't think anybody made the finals. Um, I kind of was pretty depressed after Ridge lost. I really thought he was gonna one nothing. Uh one nothing loss. That's that's a tough one. He's gonna be thinking about that for a long time. Why can't we ever win anything? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that. I took my dog for a walk after the game, before the women's game, because I was so depressed. I was like, I just got to get outside and smell some fresh air. And so I was thinking to myself this year, I was like, what is the, what's, what's worse? And maybe I'll pose this to you. Which one stung the worst this year? Was it the four-game losing streak to miss out on the bowl game with three of those losses by a single field goal? Or actually, yeah, let's see. No, yeah, the Michigan State they lost by a field goal, but but three of them were on game, literally game winning uh -huh. field goals or in overtime. So three of four games losing on the last play to miss a bowl game, getting swept in the national championship in volleyball after you know going undefeated all season, um, or you know losing in the NCAA tournament again. Which one of those is the biggest gut punch this year for Nebraska fans? Which one was I, which was the biggest one for you? I knew basketball was coming from a mile away. I mean, we just didn't have the horses, so I'll count out that one. I mean, between volleyball and football, uh, at least volleyball, we've had a lot of recent success and a lot of, you know, accolades and postseason bursts. And, you know, John Cook is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Um, so there has been a little bit of success to ease the pain from – you know, this year, but football, I mean, as a football fan, that killed me because we yeah. were so close to a bowl game. Michigan State was such a winnable game. Stop they me if you've heard that one before. <laughs> they they um, could have finished, they could have finished nine and three easily, like easily. They could have been 10 and two. If the quarterback, if the quarterback play was slightly better, and if the Big Ten refs weren't just atrocious, Nebraska would have been 10 and two this season. Uh. <laughs> yeah, football. I mean football because you know I started, I started really closely following this team and let's see, 2018 and 2021 killed me. You've literally nothing. You've literally never. I was thinking about this, um, you know, because I know you're like a recent fan. Yeah. You've never experienced anything but absolute just pain and utter destruction. So I'm trying to think. I, I give it. I'm just close to me. What's I'm your just best impressed that you. Moment? My best Here's Nebraska moment. That well, was night. Nice, that was. E Easy, 1994 Orange Bowl when they beat Miami in the Orange Bowl to when Corey when Corey Schlesinger had those touchdown runs in the fourth quarter and they came back from 17 to nine because that team yeah I was like super depressed I thought Miami was going to win that game and yeah the court the Corey Schlesinger fullback dive and when he ran in for that touchdown and I I still when I watch that highlight that that's 
that's a top five sports moment for me because that just it was like I'd never thought I got so used to seeing Nebraska lose to Miami. You know, and that team had Ray, um, you know, Warren Sapp, Ray Lewis. I mean, those guys were they just always oh. face planted in the Orange Bowl. You know, I never thought that they were gonna finally deliver. And so, like when they finally beat Miami, it just uh I can't even describe it. The, the win over Florida was pretty fun too, but there was just something about that first that first national championship that I'll never forget it. What do the youth think? I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat with them, and all they know is pain right now because you talk about <laughs> yeah. national championship Nebraska teams, like a lot of them weren't even a thought yet. I mean, I was born in 95, and, you know, so I think they're just used to it by now. You kind of grow like – you like I knew they were going to lose last night. The men were going to lose last night. I mean, I had no doubt in my mind just because everybody was so excited. <sighs> so yeah, you're exciting. right, Danny. You picked it. You were right. And I, I honestly didn't think it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot closer than what it actually was. But yeah, I mean, I appreciate your optimism, but I always, I, I guess, I am growing some sort of pessimism uh, now. I mean. Going back to my best in the basket moment, I could say probably when they hired Matt Roll, and even the jury's out on that. Like, we just still don't know. I can't think of any game or any moment where I'm like, wow, that was the best moment of, of Nebraska fandom. So, hopefully, it's coming. I mean, <clears throat> I do feel very good about the direction that the football team is going in. So, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I do, I will say that. We do have Dylan Rayola, and I do think that you know Nebraska basketball can be right back in this in this situation, yeah. you know, next year. And and if you have the same team, um, you know, they hopefully will will play better in the tournament next year. That is one thing about sports that is difficult, but a lot of times, you know, you have to lose and go through these things to learn how to win. I mean, it doesn't always happen that way. Sure, sometimes teams make the tournament and go on great runs, but you know, there's 32 other fan bases that feel the exact same way. And I I wrote this in my takeaways, like. For just because of the of what March Madness is and how it's single elimination and the sudden death, I would say that you know, outside of like losing a college football national championship, like getting your team knocked out of March Madness, <clears throat> it's like losing the Super Bowl. You know, it's like just one of those. As a sports fan, it's just one of the biggest. It's one of the biggest gut punches you can have. Like it sucks to lose a playoff game in the NFL. It sucks ten times more, ten times worse to lose a Super Bowl. Like I know we're both Patriots fans and. You know, like one of the most painful losses ever should be like the 2006 AFC title game. But I don't think about that game as much as I think about the three Super Bowl losses. So that just, you know, the goes David Tyree that. catch, I still can't talk about it, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's where we're going to stop right there. And uh, you got to watch the, I know you don't want to, but you got to watch the Dynasty show because it talks about the Malcolm Butler game and it really, it really pisses you off. Really pisses you off. Now, what did you off. think as a Michigan fan about the Mario Manningham catch in the, the, um, uh... it was a great, it was a great play, you know, Super Mario. I mean, that was, that was a good play for him. And, uh, you know, I actually always kind of, I didn't hate the giants. I always kind of liked the giants because, um, when I was like five years old, they played in the Super Bowl, and I was like the first football game I ever watched, like Phil, Phil Sims, Sims and those guys. Uh, yeah. I, I quit back, yeah. Jeff Hostetler. And then, yep. so and then that's, so I was a really big fan of Bill Parcells. So this is how I became a mm -hmm. Patriots fan because Parcells went to the Patriots I didn't realize that like coaches switch teams all the time. So then I was like, oh, I'm going to like the Patriots because I was only like eight years old. And then uh, then Tom Brady came, mm. you know, so then as the Michigan. See, like everybody, when like Tom Brady was coming up, like they had no idea who he was. Like I knew exactly who Tom Brady was. Like I didn't think he was going to be that good, but I was like, he's won a lot of games in Michigan. I don't know. And so it was really it was really fun to uh, watch him, you know, during that 2001 season. And, you know, people were finding out about him. And I was like, this is what he did at Michigan. So I'm not that surprised. But at any rate, I def you definitely should. Like my wife even got into the Patriots do uh, documentary with me. And it is kind of the hit piece on Bill Belichick. I will say that. Um, but there are some points, though, where it's like legitimate where he deserves it, though, too. So yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know. It's made by Kraft Productions. I mean, well, Robert we'll Kraft is trying to paint himself. As, yeah. You know, I mean, that's there's definitely. But if you view that going into it, like if you just like I had this um, perspective, I'm like, OK, this is a Robert Kraft PR piece, mm -hmm. you know, but the interview. But the, the thing that got me is like the player interviews, like Teddy Bruschi's on there. Willie McGinnis is on there. Like they do have some. I do wish they talked about like the Eagles, the, the Eagles Super Bowl they won. Well, you know, they like skipped the, over all that because that's they did. Uh... It's kind of I mean, they they talked about it, but they went from like. 
they went from like the uh you know that's the, when bill actually did well that's why they, they skipped they skipped over it well it's they, like there wasn't as much drama but it's like man they had some epic teams like that did. Corey dylan team like i just remember the uh, and this is back when sports illustrated was the thing but they had uh it was like the playoff preview you know and it was the patriots and they had Corey dylan and they're like you know it's just yeah. like don't sleep on the Patriots. And then Corey Dillon ran for like almost 200 yards in that game. They won like 20 to three or something over the Colts. That yeah, in that, in that year, Dillon ran for 1,635 yards in the regular season. So he had a fantastic year. I think it was – well, no, he, he was there for, let's see, th- three or four years, I want to say. But that – his first year, he was outstanding. And like, um, you know, the thing that they didn't talk about that I was disappointed was – uh. You, when they won the Super Bowl in 2014, when they played the Ravens in that divisional playoff, and they were down 10, yep. and Bill pulled out that they started doing that formation but, where the guy uh, didn't Edelman go out had, as a receiver. Yeah, Edelman had that pass. Was yep, it? and then and, and they were doing something with their formation too. Yeah, Edelman had that pass, but then they did something with the they made like an eligible receiver ineligible, but they were lining him up wide. And uh, Harbaugh and like, was complaining. Yeah, oh, Harbaugh was pissed as all hell about it. And that they they said that was why they com- they filed the complaint about the ball, you know. And so they yeah. they really focused about the deflate gate and uh the spy gate, you know, they really hit on that, which was kind of I mean, the spy gate, it was like it was kind of interesting to ask Bill Belichick, like, why? Yeah. You know, and Ernie Ernie Adams too. And Ernie Adams is like, Well, it's basic counterintelligence, which I totally understand. I totally understand it from like that military perspective and like I honestly think that Bill I, – I don't think the Patriots ever thought it was that big of a deal. I think they're just like, we'll collect this information. And, you know, and I, like, I don't think that they cheated to win. Yeah, That's just like – no, I don't think that they – like, like I don't think that that was their intent. I just thought that, like, they they thought that they had information available to them, so why not try to use it? Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, yeah, maybe maybe if you get – the thing about it is, like, the sign thing is it's 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 so much like people try to blow it out of proportion and it's like football it's not that it, it's so comp it's such a complicated sport and there's so many things that go into it like maybe it could give you an advantage if you got one call in a certain situation but it's like but they could do that while they're sitting there you know like Ernie Adams could sit there across the field and jot it down in his notebook and that's legal so I mean like yeah he elect I mean so it is a fine line. I can understand where Bill's coming from, but it also was kind of stupid. And my favorite rate, thing about the deflate gate was that Laguerre Blunt rushed for 148 yards and three touchdowns. Like yeah, passing the ball was not an issue. Uh And that's was. it's just so stupid like <laughs> yeah. so because the ball because the ball is slightly <laughs> deflated like that big. Like just it's so dumb. Like come on. Like that's and uh, the fact that, like, two weeks later, he beat one of the greatest defenses of all time without a, you know, modified Super Bowl and was down 10 points. The Patriots were down 10 points in that Super Bowl. I remember it like it was mm. yesterday, 24-14, and I'm thinking, like, man, they are effed. They are and effed. The Tyler, Lock- or the, the Tyler Lockett catch. Or yeah. No, was it Tyler Lockett or was it? Oh, uh, no, it was a curse. That's yep, what it was, Bond, curse. Curse, yeah. But, yeah, but, but even before that, I just I remember thinking, like, Man, they're total. There's no way they're gonna do. And then Tom Brady puts together two like 80 yard touchdown drives against you know what many people say is the best secondary in NFL history, one of the best. And to I me, I thought that, that was, yeah. I thought that I mean the Atlanta game that was like a defining moment too. But like those two drives right there, that's that's all you need to know about Tom Brady. That Atlanta game, but that was just so like they had it in the bag. And Kyle Shanahan, stop me if you've heard this one before, messed it up <laughs> when he needed to execute the most. That's tough. That's Sorry, guys. Sorry, 49 Yeah, sorry. Fans. We're and talking about brighter days. Yeah, I don't know how we got off of this tangent, but, you know, at any rate, that's that's what it is, uh, you know. But, yeah, in terms of the, the young folks, I don't know, man. They got they, We got to give them something They're to They're kind of used here. to it. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of used to it. I, I Like, just now, you were trying to think about my best Husker moment. I mean, maybe beating Purdue and Wisconsin in the span of a couple weeks earlier early this year, maybe. Yeah, but, that was pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a football guy, so I want something hap- good to happen with football. It's it's definitely uh, it's definitely way way uh, overdue. But you know, I believe in this team. I'm not going to make like any insane predictions right now, but I believe in this team. I want to see what the quarterbacks do this spring. But I don't know. There'll be time for insane predictions. If we don't go to a bowl game this year, I I don't know what I'm going to do. I will absolutely <laughs> I will absolutely lose my mind. I will lose my mind. 
Like, I don't know how I don't know how I'll react, man. I may I may like blow a gasket. I don't I the don't schedule know. is just, very favorable to start off. This back is, is gonna be tough. Get us to a freaking bowl game, Matt Rule, please. I cannot I cannot handle it. I will freak out. I'll probably give myself an aneurysm. So just get us to a bowl game, please. The, the back half is gonna be tough, but if they can take care of the front half, the first six games of the schedule, then they got a shot. They can, and then we can all, yeah. That hopefully that will happen. So at any rate, you guys, it was fun to talk about some Nebraska sports. I gotta get going, but uh thanks for everybody who joined us in the chat and everybody who will watch on the replay. Uh make sure if you haven't again, please hit the uh like button, hit the subscribe button, get into the comment section, check us out at huskerbigred.com as well, and uh Come uh, check us out on Monday morning. We'll be back. Indeed. And uh, as always, (laughs) go Big Red. Go Big Red.